Good morning, brothers and sisters from all around North America. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion. Let's start off by offering a greeting a bow to our heavenly parents and true parents. 정진 전부모님께 겸배 바로 And to lead us through the family pledge, I'd like to invite up Reverend Milhan Stevens. 가정 맹세 1. 천여극 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 번향 땅을 찾아 번연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 2. 천여극 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에 쓰는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천여극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황조권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천여극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조 이상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천여극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천여극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 찬원을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천여극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심장문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천여극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 천여극 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Thank you, Reverend Milhan Stevens. And now to open us in prayer, I'd like to call on uh, Yuko Maskiotra. You come ask your tray, she could open us up in a prayer, please. Uh, there's the heavenly parent. We thank you so much to have this uh, morning devotion and with uh, Dr. Young and with our beloved brothers and sisters. And we really pray for uh, her true mother, uh, her safety, her long life, and uh, uh, protection. And uh, we are truly thank you for true mother. Without her, how can we uh, fulfill our purpose of life? We thank you for heavenly parents. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for true father. But here on the earth, now true mother, we really uh, support and protect and unite with the true mother to accomplish your will on the earth. We thank you so much for this time moment. And thank you for Dr. Young to guide this morning devotion. So all with our brother and sister heart, we uh, sincerely attend this morning devotion to receive uh, your uh, guidance. We thank you so much. I report in the name of Jinu Yukuma Shotra, present our family. Aju. Aju. Thank you, Yuko. Masao Tura san, kamsamida. 
Thank you very much, uh, Yuko Maski Otra. And now, brothers and sisters, uh, let us start the day in joy by sharing our appreciation points with everyone, with your partner this morning. So uh, we're going to go into breakouts now. Please click join. If you're by yourself, please take this moment to reflect on what you're grateful for this morning. We'll see you all in a few minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> I hope you had a, a wonderful sharing, heartfelt sharing. I uh, was with uh, Marco Steven and uh, Kume Kwonsonim and uh, was also with Norikuni Nishikawa. <laughs> Fortunately, Uncle Steven dropped off just a little bit, but I had a very intimate conversation, a very fun conversation with Nori, who would like to invite up to share his gratitude points this morning. Norikuni Nishikawa. Thank you, Vice Fred. Can everyone hear me good? Just make sure. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, once again, I am grateful for Dr. Young. So thank you, Dr. Young, and everyone actually behind the scenes as well, including Vice Fred, always being able to offer the best, uh, offer his wondrous files, and as well as everyone, uh, for today's breakout room and the mini breakout rooms, uh, being able to share honestly and openly uh, with many brothers and sisters across the world, so to speak, uh, is truly an honor. And as Resper was sharing just a little bit about his gratitude point, it made me realize once again, uh, the small things in life and the small you know occurrences that happens in my life with the community that I'm in and even the moments where I may not appreciate it at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that God is always there loving me and that more and more that I can see the signs uh, and accept God or follow what God is trying to tell me. Like this morning, uh, literally I just woke up, I look at the time, it's just exactly at six o'clock and I'm like, I should probably join morning devotion. So here I am. Uh, so thank you uh, so much, God, for letting me come here today and to share in front of everyone. To you, Dr. Young, and you. and for everyone else to come join this morning. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Norikuni, for your sharing. Wow, thank you so much for your, how to say, uh, you naturally really accept Heavenly Parents as your own parent. Thank you for your appreciation. Kamsamida. Thank you, Nori. If you wake up at six, it means God is telling you to join morning devotion. <laughs> and next, I'd like to invite up, they may already know that they're going to be picked, but uh, John and Keiko King. John and Keiko King, I'd like to invite you to share this morning. Wow. Uh, I didn't know we were going to be picked. <laughs> oh, from Canada. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we. We enjoyed uh, the discussion with Reverend Milhan this morning. Uh, he was bringing up a very good point that all of the, uh, I think God is cultivating all of the science and religion and academic and all sorts of spheres are coming to the peak of the mountaintop. And I think, as I understood, he said, we're, we're sitting up there with true parents. And it made me think of one thing I thought of a few years ago that, science uh, has a very good potential to prove God before religion. The science can prove God exists. As the science is developing, more and more they're going to the things that are more internal, I think, on some levels. So I'm grateful that God's providence is developing so well. And as I shared, my point of gratitude was I'm really grateful to see the, our young second generation who are not children anymore. They're grown up with their own families and taking responsibility. And I believe they're really bringing great comfort to our heavenly parent, our true parents. So I'm really grateful for second gen and wow. third gen and so on. Yeah. Keiko-san. Good morning. Um, I'm also grateful for our true mother, like uh, the Yuko-san's prayer this morning. And uh, uh, when I'm reading every morning, little by little, uh, true mother's memoir, I can see the righteous people all over the world. Uh, and um, uh, somehow those people, uh, even before uh, they didn't know the true parents, the, they are doing the God's will. I think that that is because of the true parents, in, uh, the victorious foundation. And then uh, the Reverend Mirhan said, those people, uh, we are standing on top of uh, the, uh, the mountain together with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the true parents. But those people are, uh, you know, they eventually more got, uh, get the higher and the higher their conscience eventually come together. I'm really grateful for the true parents' victory uh, because the, the, the God inspire the capable people all over the world. Uh, eventually, 
uh, doing the God's will for the sake of the building the world peace. Mm. The, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, John and Keiko. How come your couple resemble each other so much? <laughs> like, a, <laughs> like a dual characteristics of my God, such an <laughs> ideal couple. That's why you, they, you, you resemble each other so much. That's why maybe internally a lot of fighting. So uh, I think already you overcame. Thank you so much for your couple, John Keiko. Yes, uh, thank you, John and Keiko King. Dr. Young says it quite a bit. <laughs> that you, you, you live together so much, you start to, to look like each other. <laughs> But with that, brothers and sisters, let's prepare our hearts, let's prepare our minds to receive our heavenly inspiration this morning through our beloved Dr. Chun Shik Yong. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and members of all peace. Yesterday, I talked about heaven's providence and devotion to give birth to the only begotten daughter. Today, I'd like to talk about God is your father. Uh, I'd like to share based upon, uh, you know, uh, Mothers of Peace uh, memoir. So let's invite Heavenly Honey to read Mother's Word. I was only excited and delighted by the words, one and only daughter of the Lord. Mother often called me precious daughter of the Lord with emphasis as if she were praying. Throughout her life, this was the term that she used when she prayed for me, her only daughter. In this way, I grew up feeling honored that I was the daughter of God the daughter of the Lord. My maternal grandmother, Jo Wan Mo, also looked into my eyes and told me clearly, God is your father. Because of that, whenever I heard the word father, my heart would burst in my chest. For me, the word father brought to mind not my own father, but our heavenly father. Wow, great. Do you know the, the from mother's name, eh? Hong Sune? We call her Hong Demonim, Demonim, right? Hong Demonim, who was a true mother's mother, raised from mother and educated her as the only begotten daughter of God. Not uh, as a physical mother, but as a nanny, you know, as a nanny. What we are learning here is teaching us that when we raise our children, we must also raise them as a nanny, not as a, our own children. This is a very, very important point about that. Reverend Yohanni mentioned always the same things, even through father, through mother also mentioned. Actually, Hong Demonim exactly practice when, you know, uh, Hong Demonim take care of the true mother, treat true mother as a God's only begotten daughter, you know, as the as the as the, the one and only daughter of the Lord. That kind of the attitude we need to really inherit from Hong Demonim. We are raising our children as a humanistic uh, view because we believe that. It is our children who make mistakes while raising them. So our mistake, always we are making mistakes. We treat our own children as my own child. You are my, my son, you are my daughter. We do not treat them as God's sons and daughters. This is a really, this is kind of the humanistic view, humanistic thinking, humanistic uh, idea and attitude always make the problems. This is the one of the main our problem. So, so as we raise our children, we must serve and nurture our children with the heart that God has entrusted them to us. 
God has entrusted, in, in, entrusted you know, our children to us. They are actually not my children. They are God's direct children. When we raise up our children in such a way, oh my God, you know, how much really we can raise up our children very, very well. From this point of view, Hong Demonim was a really, really, really great person. Just as Moses' mother raised Moses from the position of the nanny, Hong Demonim fulfilled her portion of responsibility. Therefore, whenever we treat our spouse and children or parents in the home, and our family members, we should treat them with a heavenly dignity as God's representatives or as, God, as sons and daughters of God. This is a really important point. That's why when I study this morning and yesterday again uh, through Mother's Word and think about our Hong Demonim's attitude, I really reflect on myself. I know I treat my wife as a really God's daughter and God's representative. When I raise up my own children, I call their name, Sunshin, Yushin, Jisun. And also, you know, when I, when I see my grandchildren, you know, often I really treat them as my own child, my own grandchildren, as my own wife. That is a reason, you know, that is the reason I cannot raise up my children properly. This is the problem. We need to learn from Hong Demonim. Because, uh, you know, true mother is a special case, uh, nothing like that. We need to learn really Hong Demonim's attitude. If we have the same kind of the Hong Demonim attitude, we are just a nanny. And in order to raise up our children as a God's children, you are daughter of the Lord. You are son of the Lord. No? So if we raising up our children in such a way, when we treat my wife not as my own wife, God's representative. My parents are really, you know, God himself. And then, you know, if we have that kind of attitude and treatment, wow, our life, how much it can change. You know, Mr. So is beside me always. He's my secretary. I reflect on myself this morning. I treat him just as my own secretary. He's one of the you know, main guys to support me. Or I treat him really God's son. Then my attitude completely changed. Why my heart, my spirit cannot grow up well? Because always I treat people humanistic way. When we treat uh, anyone as a humanistic view, humanistic attitude, there is no God. There is no dignity. That's why this morning I really reflect myself a lot through our Hong Demonim's attitude. Next one. Oh, sorry. Because of such love in my home, I never worried about my life. Despite our poverty and despite my father not being with us, I always was content. This was because I knew that God was my father, that he was my reason for being alive, and that he was always right there by my side, taking care of me. I sensed that God was my real parent from the moment of my birth. I realize now that I had a sensitive spiritual intuition. My husband recognized this in me and complimented me for my insight into things that were taking place. He did so sometimes during his talks to members. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. 
Uh, from a young age, true mother grew up knowing that heavenly parents were her natural parent. If we humans had not fallen, we have grown up knowing our heavenly parent as our innate parent, just a natural parent. No need to learn. Can you imagine who is God? You need to know who is God. You know, when you're raising up your children, no need to tell, no need to tell your own, own baby, your own children, do you know who I am? You know, I am your mother, I am your mother, I am your father. Need to teach them all the time? Not like that. Just become very, very natural. So true mother is God's only begotten daughter. When she grew up really naturally, except God is my own father, my own parents. So if Adam and Eve do not fall, you know, the descendant of Adam and Eve naturally can accept God is my eternal parent. No need to teach, no need to teach dual characteristics, no need to teach what's the God's identity. Do, do you know who is God? No need to teach about that because of the fall. We need to recover one by one. That is really our fallen man's agony. Therefore, when we, so from this point of view, God directly raised the true mother through Hong Demonim. Therefore, when we raise our children, if we treat our children as a child, children of God, it is said that the heavens raise them directly. This is very important. Your attitude is very important. If your attitude treat your children as God's sons and daughters, God's direct child, then the remaining job is God directly raise up them. But if I have a wrong attitude, wrong mindset, then become very much humanistic and very much horizontal. Then Satan anytime invade. That's why we need to really realize at this point. Whenever I see the people, whenever I see my children, see my spouse, how do I treat them? Humanistic way or a God's point of view? This is the point. You know, when we have the right attitude, you are God's sons and daughters. We treat anyone as God's sons and daughters, then, then God directly can intervene. God directly raise up them based on my right attitude. The reason we make mistake in our life of faith is because we think of everything from a human point of view. That is the problem. Today's Father's Word, the way to receive God's love and grace. Heavenly Honey, please read. If you were to experience God's agonizing heart, God would forget his agony and accept you with open arms. Additionally, you have hope as you are walking the way of heavenly virtue, the way of finding truth, but God is filled with concern for you. For those of you walking this way, God's love and grace will be with you. If you did not live in such a way, then you should feel concerned. Do not blame and resent your brothers and fellow countrymen. Do not blame and resent the world and God. If you should blame and resent someone, blame yourself. You should blame yourself before you blame and resent other people and before you blame and resent God. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. If we were to experience God's agonizing heart, Father said, God would forget his agony and accept, accept you with open arms. Wow. It's an attitude. Right? So, so uh, if you were to experience God's agonizing heart, agonizing heart, God's sorrowful heart, God's suffering, God's difficulties, and then you feel, you need to feel, you know, his agony, his sorrow. 
My sorrow is connect to God's sorrow. My experience connect to God's experience. If you have this kind of the same mindset as God, you know, God accept you and with open arms. Additionally, you have hope as you are walking the way of heavenly virtue, the way of finding truth. Father said here, but God is filled with concern for you. God is concerned for you 24 hours. Just like a parents worry after their trial when he, he, he is away, away. So, Father said, when you comfort God's sorrowful and agonizing heart, his love and grace will be with you. This kind of really attitude, not simple matter. That's why I really learned from father. Father's attitude as a filial son. Always oh, he think, I will be responsible for God. Secondly, I will protect no matter, no matter what for God. And then thirdly, no matter what, I will serve him, love him. This kind of the mindset attitude is the mindset of the filial sons and daughters. That is the attitude of the parent of heart. So uh, we need to learn from true parents how to treat people, how to treat God, how to treat the nature, everything. I really learn our true parents, three kind of the principle of the parent of heart. Number one, no matter what, I will be responsible for you. Secondly, no matter what, I will protect for you. Number three, no matter what, I will raise up for you. Wow. When you are struggling with your enemy, you need to think that way. When you are, when you are raising up your children, you need to think, think that way. When you see someone's fault, someone persecute you, misunderstand you, you need to have the opposite way. How can I protect him? How can I responsible for him? How can I raise up for him? This is a really great point. That's why Father said, when you comfort God's sorrowful and agonizing heart, heavenly parents, I will protect you. I will be responsible for your sorrowful, agonizing heart. No matter what, I love you. I care for you. I attend you. Then Father said, God's love and grace will be with you. If you did not live such a way, then you should feel concerned for yourself. Do not blame and reason a region of your brothers and a fellow countrymen. Why you should not reason others? You, your heart have been indebted to God. And you are the object of his concern. Therefore, do not blame and reason the world and God. Wow. If you should blame and reason someone, blame yourself. You should blame yourself before you blame and reason other people and before you blame and reason God. Really, we have no qualification to blame anyone. Always really reflect on our own self. Today's youth ministry, about how can you reconcile the to God? And yesterday I talked about today's series two. How can you be reconciled to God? The principle that we can be reconciled only when we deny ourselves applies equally to our human life. Self-denial. Without self-denial, there is no way to reconcile with God. You know, we are, we came from, you know, Satan's lineage background. That's why we are actually enemy to God. So in order to, in order to, in order to reconcile with God, you need to completely separate from Satan. It means you need to deny your own self. I am not mine. I belong to God. 
nothing to do with the Satan. With the, that kind of the self-denial, there is no way to reconcile with God. This is a, with that why this kind of principle, you know, we need to apply equal to our human family as well. The, the disharmony in our lives is a, a problematic because we put ourselves first and do calculation and arguing. This always create, you know, that's why always create disharmony. What's the main reason create disharmony? Because you always put your own self, your own opinion first. You try to convince your spouse. You try to convince your children. You insist on your own, own opinion first. And then always calculating, always centering on self center. That is the reason always arguing, arguing, arguing. You know, you think that you are really principal. You are really good. And the other person is, is not good. I am really correct. You are wrong. This kind of attitude, let's say, even though you are very much a principal, you are saying something or writing, but you just only say like that without loving, without heart, without embracing. It does not work at all. It does not work. Sometimes the feelings of the faith the, and reason to not become one, uh, there, are, uh, there are times when people think that it is right with the reason, but cannot accept it in, the, in their heart. And other times when uh, people can understand, accept it in their heart, but, but think that it is not right with the reason, right? Therefore, you should always put the feelings and heart of faith first and always try to see from God's point of view. Hmm? Not centering on the reason, not centering on principle, not centering on my own calculation. It does not work. The most important, you need to put your heart and love. If you focus on heart and love, you know, you are right or I am, you are right, I am wrong. This is the second matter. You try to accept, try to embrace the centering on heart, then any reason, any kind of external things can be solved. This is the point. If we have that kind of attitude, Surely I can become the you know peacemaker. I can become I can become real any any way you, you I can make a person to make reconciliation. Reconciliation is possible only in the portion of true children. This is because when your heart grows and you can feel God's circumstance and heart a lot. You can become a person who can be reconciled. Therefore, reconciliation is impossible if my spirit and heart do not grow. Why I cannot embrace people? Why I will always become troublemaker? Why I'm always arguing with my spouse, my children, with the other neighbor, or with my able? Why I always this kind of complaint heart comes out? What is the reason? You are mentioned very clearly. Reconciliation only possible in the position of true children. You know, to become true children, you need to grow up. As much as you grow up, you can embrace anyone. You can reconcile with anyone. But your spirit is not yet grow up much then you try to unite with somebody, it is impossible. That's why we need to focus on my own self-growth, spiritual growth. And then when your heart is really growing up and become mature enough, then you can handle anyone, you can embrace anyone, you can digest even your enemy. 
But your container of your heart is very, very narrow, very, very small heart, and always complaining, always arguing and fighting each other. Then what's the best way to be reconciled? You need to grow up, really mature enough from formation stage to growth stage, from growth stage to completion stage, you need to enter the wall of a heart. Otherwise, your container is never expand to embrace you know, you know, your brother, own brothers and sisters. This is the important point. That's why here mentioned that reconciliation is possible only in the position of true children. You know, to become true children, no other way. You need to grow up. So the Bible says, bless other peacemakers for they will be called the son of God. Now this is to become peacemaker. How to become peacemaker? You need to grow up and then become real God's children. God's real children, wherever you go, always become peacemakers. Reconciliation cannot be achieved by focusing only on one's own circumstances and selfish thought without feeling God's circumstances and heart. This is the principle of reconciliation. In order to be harmonious, There must be no person whom you hate. You should be able to embrace and take care of even those you hate. We are human beings. We are fallen men. We are often struggling with somebody, with your able. You know, everybody has that kind of challenge. You can love someone, but some you cannot you cannot love another person. We are all Always a challenge. That is our task. You know, we cannot love someone. This is our challenging. When we overcome it, when you overcome, you know, you are his someone, I am telling you, you can reach a different dimension. So when I was young, just a joint church, you know. And then relationship with Abel in the army, and then after, uh, after I become the church pioneer here and then, uh, then I need to deal with you know good Abel, bad Abel, all kind of all kind of people. Someone sometimes I need to deal with some member really struggling with me this and that. But when I overcome, when I really overcome, I really I don't like someone. I can see that I reach a different dimension. That's why our main job is what? How can we digest our enemy? Without loving our enemy, we cannot become men of true love. True love can digest even our own enemy. This is the point. That's why God always giving you homework. God said, you need to love that person even though you don't like that person. God always giving that kind of homework and task. Each person is different according to your position, according to your situation. Someone is more higher level. He has a different level of the task. That's why If we do not love someone, you don't, you don't like someone, then your spirit cannot grow up. This is the issue. How can we do? Once again, I'd like to read it here. In order to be harmonious, there must be no person whom, whom you hate. You should be able to embrace and take care of even told you hate. You must be a person who can show compassion to others. That's why whenever I struggle with somebody, someone persecute me, misunderstand me, 
even though I try to go right way. But always that guy persecuted me, misunderstand me, hate me. And then through Paradise teaching me that you need to have the same mindset as me. You need to think that I have to be responsible for that person no matter what. No matter what, you need to protect that person. No matter what, you need to raise up that person, centering on true love. When I have this kind of the true parasite guidance, and then really immediately change my mindset. Wow, true parasite guidance is really amazing, really amazing. You should always be able to bring freedom, peace, happiness, and blessing to those who are around you. Our job is to convey freedom and peace and happiness and blessing to others. That is our job. The present era is the era of the reconciliation after the end of the restoration through the indemnity, the era of the fighting with Satan. Now, and yeah, era, the era of the indemnity is already over. Hmm? Of course, we have, you know, each person in a different situation. You, you, have, you, you have your own indemnity course still remain, maybe. You know, however, in general, the present era is the era of the reconciliation of the end of the restoration to humanity. Therefore, now is the time to show the world that we are reconciled. Now is the fruit-bearing season. That's why whenever we approach it to Christian ministers and neighbors, our tribe, we need to think that now is the time to show the world that we are reconciled. You know, to reconcile what to do, you need to grow up. You need to have the parental heart to embrace them. Then surely we can bear fruit. It is an era when people around you want to believe in you. Wow. Someone look at you. Yeah, I do not know Reverend Moon and Mrs. Moon. I do not know, you know, God is a living God or not. But seeing you, I want to become Unification Church member. Seeing your couple, your family, I want to receive blessing. Should be like that. You know, should be like that. That's why it is an era when people around you want to believe in you, want to follow you, want to resemble you. As a leader, it is no longer an era of verbal speaking, but how you influence those around you. You need to become the substance of the word, substance of the word, and the substance of love, and become a person who influences those around you so that people around you cannot help but have a fate. People around me should be influenced by me and be determined to practice their faith. I have no idea God is or not. God, God, God does not exist or not. I have no idea. I don't have any, I don't have any idea, really, Reverend Moon is the Messiah or not. However, seeing you, I really, really want to resemble you. I really want to close to you. I never ever seen this kind of guy, this kind of couple, this kind of family. I never ever seen. Just seeing your family, I really want to resemble. Can I join you? Can I, can you teach me? Wow. This kind of person always making reconciliation. In other words, you must become a person who has to power to what's that? Reproduce life. Hmm? If you are alive, then 
surely you will multiply. That's why I always say in that life only giveables to life. You are really alive, surely you will multiply. But if we are spiritually dead, we cannot reproduce. This is the problem. When you are alive, result automatically come out. Automatic. When you are alive, then many people come to you. Why people do not come to me? Why people, why struggle with me? Your spiritual life is not so much stable. That's the reason. True parents are the one who have been driving first to move the wall of our heart. The driving force was achieved on the base that true parents regarded God as absolute. And God regarded true parents as absolute. Therefore, we must also regard, regard God and true parents as absolute. Only this way can we be reconciled, reconciled to God. You know? That's why you need to deny yourself. When you really believe in God, absolutely. When you believe through parents, absolutely. You know, there's a perfect plus can create perfect minus. Therefore, if we, if we believe in God really such absolute way, absolute obedience, absolute faith, absolute love, to this kind of the way, not just only we believe in God and believe in true parents. If we believe in God absolute, if we believe in true parents absolute, and then God treat me as absolute partner, uh, absolute you know, object partner. This kind of attitude is really important. Because true parents are alive and have overcome the suffering of the cross, they can move the wall of the human heart. Why all mankind, why everybody try to resemble true parents? Try to unite with them. Because they really overcame all kind of the cross and suffering and difficulties. And then they become the driving force of the true love. So we need to resemble like that and grow up, become God's sons and daughters. And then we can be reconciled to our heavenly parents and true parents with any other one. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Young, today on your message of reconciling with God. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for a few days now, and I really appreciate all that you share on it. And brothers and sisters, now is our time to share with each other, to digest first, and to share with each other our insights and anything we gain from it. So please click join as you enter your breakouts. And if you're by yourself, please take this moment to reflect on what was just shared. We'll see you all in a few minutes.
and we're back <laughs> we're back uh i hope you had a wonderful sharing with whoever was in your breakout i had a very intimate one-on-one -on -one with my beloved sister susan edwards susan edwards from florida who i'd like to call on now to share with us her reflection point this morning you can go ahead and unmute yourself yeah, thank you so much. It's a very, very good uh, sharing. And this is very amazing what, uh, what Dr. Young shared about. Uh, I always tried my children to, to really love them from God's, the, the God, their God's children. I even nursed other child, babies when I was nursing my kids. They I nursed them. <laughs> They're all my kids, you know, like that. Uh, God's kids, so I have to nurse them. I have to take care of God's kids. But it was still, it's not enough because it was in my head, not in my heart enough. So I have to really repent. And I'm so grateful for this, this to know this. Because I it did my grandchildren, not my grandchildren. I have to learn from true mother how she said, well, how she learned from Damon. So I really appreciate what you said to me, and I'm going to do it. I have to do it. I have to change myself completely wow. and become much better person, much more godly person. So thank you, Dr. Young, for this this very important thing. I'm uh, first you. Uh, you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not enough yet. But I'm no, coming on. I think I'm coming. your sharing is so powerful and so great. Thank you so much for your honest, honest sharing. Kamsamira. Kamsamira. <laughs> yes, Kamsamira. Thank you very much, Aunt Susan. Uh, she is very, very powerful and very strong with her words. Uh, and I really appreciate it uh, speaking to her. Next, I'd like to invite up uh, another dear aunt of mine from New Jersey, Ava Ozaki. Ava Ozaki to share with us her reflection point this morning. All right. Good morning. Can you Good hear morning, me? Eva Chang. Good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, everybody. Actually, I live in Maryland. Uh, that's right. Yeah, totally, totally. I was thinking of someone else. <laughs> Thank you. I was with Pastor Milhan. And um, yeah, I was really reflecting because Dr. Young said, um, that this harmony comes if we put myself first, you know, and uh, and he said like um, if I think I'm correct, you know, and the other person is wrong, then you know it doesn't work because, especially if it's not with love and heart, you know, because some of we we forget about that. Yes, I'm right. So I really am grateful, Doctor Young, always stressing, you know, with heart and with love, and I realized that. For myself right now, to delve more, my heart is to have a heart of gratitude, you know, like grateful to my husband, grateful to my children. <laughs> that really opens up more, you know, because, you know, it's something we don't like doctors. If you take things for granted, we, you know, it's so, you know, not easy. But if I have gratitude, it really helps me to more love and to start uh, from there. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay, Dr. Thank Yon. you, Eva. That's why we... You know, when we deal with our spouse or our own children, we need to put our heart first. The principle is the second. <laughs> yes. You know, we need to put our heart and love first and then principle is the second. Why we create this harmony? Because we principle first and then put our heart in the second. That is the problem. Yes. Right. That is really creating this harmony. Even though I'm saying I'm right, I'm right. This is really, I am telling you, I'm telling the truth. Yeah, you can, can you can tell truth, but there is a no heart there. That's why, you know, your, your, your spouse want to, want to receive, you want to feel your love and heart. Why always saying just principle, principle, I am right, I am right. You are bad guy, terrible guy. My God. <laughs> thank you very thank much thank you uh, dr young yeah and Eva and uh and dr young you know just really briefly when dr young was sharing especially in the point on loving your enemies i thought back to the chosen video most of you have seen that the chosen video and there's a part where archbishop stalling goes he loved his enemies he lived for the sake of others <laughs> and i feel like that that really perfectly sums up who true parents are and it's so beautiful that that alone, you know, gives us sort of substance and that's just enough. 
as long as we love our enemies and live for the sake of others. And so thank you very much, Dr. Young, for, for sharing with us today. Now on to our announcements. I'd like to just invite you all to invite people to be a part of this morning devotion experience. If you're watching from YouTube or Facebook, you can join the Zoom room by going to edu.familyfed.org to be able to join in in this sort of in person <laughs> experience with everyone here. And also, um, if you'd like to if you'd like to donate, I'd ask, like to ask you to give joyfully by clicking the link in the chat. Everything there goes towards supporting Morning Devotion Ministry, the production and everything behind the scenes. And so if you'd like to give, the link is in the chat. You can also set recurring so you don't have to think about it again. And now it's my pleasure, it's my honor to welcome up our musical offering for today. She's, uh, <laughs> most of you know her, she's a very powerful, powerful um, sister in, in New York. And that is Dr. Juanita Pierre-Louis. Dr. Juanita Pierre-Louis, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Redford. Hey, uh, hey, what is that? <laughs> hello, hello, Doc. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, you know, I like the sound of doctor, but I like most the sound of auntie and mama. <laughs> so you can call me Mama Juanita or Auntie Juanita. <laughs> I like those sounds. But uh, they give a certain resonance, you know. Uh, I, you know, this morning I was thinking about being patriotic, but... Uh, you know, something said, no, nah, you know, <laughs> just have fun and love. And I would like to say to you, Dr. Young, uh, you have revived America. I, I cannot, I cannot go beyond that, over that, all around it or nothing, but I have seen people grow. I've seen the spiritual growth in this nation. Thank you. I've seen the revival. So we got to take this revival outside too. And we've got to uh, revive this country. And I love this country. But uh, this morning, I just want to sing a song about being friends, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> when you're down in troubles and you need some love and care and nothing, nothing is going right. Ooh, you just call on her and soon she will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. You just call our mother's name and you know wherever she is, uh, she'll come running. Oh, yes, she will to see you again. Oh, hey, hey, winter, spring, summer, uh, fall. All oh, you got to do is call and she'll be there. Yes, she will. You got a friend. When the sky above you grows dark and full of clouds and that old, old east wind began to blow, ooh, keep your head together and call mother's name out loud. And soon you'll see her running to your door. Oh, you just call out her name. And you know wherever she is, uh, she'll come running. Oh, yes, she will to see you again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Winter, spring, summer, uh, fall. All you got to do is call and she'll be there. Yes, she will. You got a friend. Now ain't it good to know that you got a friend? Cause people can be so cold. They'll hurt you and desert you. 
They'll take your soul if you let them. Oh, but Dr. Young, don't you let them. Hey, hey. You just call out her name. And you know wherever she is, uh, she'll come running, run, 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 running to see you again. Oh, hey, hey, winter, spring, summer, or fall. All you got to do is come. And she'll be there. Yes, she will. Got a friend. You got a friend in our mother. You got a Thank you. Whoa, hallelujah. Bravo. I will want to thank you for your beautiful song. You are you are the Edna's ever uh, Edna's God, Pastor Edna's God. Thank you so much for your beautiful uh, singing. <laughs> okay, come samida. Thank you very much, Dr. Winnie. That was really beautiful. Thank you for sharing with oh, us. Oh, the uh, rest, Fred. One thing yes. I'd like to mention that just now someone uh, uh, sent the message to chat room here. Our the Odumas Odum, uh, surgery is scheduled for today. I'd like to ask all brothers and sisters pray for him and then quickly recover. And then I want to hear his beautiful song again. Thank you. Yes, please pray for our brother Hot Marwine. And, and actually, there's another announcement I completely forgot. And um, Aunt Ray Beth May put it in the chat the Peace and Blessing Festival, what we saw on June 5th, is being rebroadcasted. It's being re rebroadcasted up until July 3rd. So, Monday to Friday, 12, 6, 9 Eastern Time. 12, 6, 9 not 12 a.m., 12 p.m., <laughs> 6, 9. And then uh, on, in the weekends, we have 9, 12, and 6. 9, 12, and 6. So if you'd like to rewatch it together with your guests, we can't leave it up on the website to play because of uh, broadcasting rights, but we can schedule it at those times. So if you'd like to watch or watch it with your guests, um, those are the times it's playing. It's in the chat for you to, to reference. So with that, I'd like to call on to close it out in prayer. Kotone um, Narifusa. To, to close out in prayer. Yeah, please join me in prayer. <clears throat> uh, dear Heavenly Parent, your parents in Jesus, good morning, Heavenly Parent. We are all gathered here today, this morning, this Thursday morning, um, and learning so much, getting so much wisdom, and um, feeding our spirit selves, Heavenly Parent. I know that um, in the day-to-day, everyday tasks that we go through we can um, it's so easy to forget your existence in our uh, in our lives and it's so easy to uh, blame all of our misfortune and all of our um, difficulty on the world and on everything else except for ourselves so it's really time heavenly parent for all of us to take responsibility for ourselves and um, for all of the things that come our way and really be confident that we're able to um, you know, put one foot over uh, in front of the other and um, really trust in you and trust in the process and um, really understanding that each opportunity, each, you know, difficulty that's given to us is an opportunity for us to grow and to become closer to you and to understand your heart more and to reconcile our relationship with you that was lost at the beginning um, during the fall. You know, that's really the importance of everything that we teach. Um, Adam and Eve was unable to take responsibility and come to you for for help and ask for ask for guidance and um, continue to blame the people around us in our environment and continue to blame, um, you know, other people in the circumstance that was given. And so we, it's time for us to um, understand this idea and um, really you know, be able to make a change and be able to do things differently this time uh, because of this amazing education that we're, give, we're given and um, for True Parents and for Dr. Young and everybody here and um, so many of this wonderful first gen. So um, as a second gen, we're really grateful to be able to stand on that foundation and I hope that we can um, 
you know, take each word and take each interaction to heart and um, really be excited to be given this opportunity to reconcile our relationship with you and the people around us and, um, you know, build our relationship with ourselves to better ourselves. And um, yeah, so I'm grateful again for another day of life and um, for your mother and for everybody here. I really pray for everyone's health and well-being and um, for all of the challenges and all of the great things that are to come today and this week. So thank you so much. Um, I like to end my prayer in my name, Petoni Narifusa, daughter of Hiroshi and Toshiko Narifusa, Blessed Central Family, Aju. Aju Kotone! Very, very I beautiful prayer. Really. When can I see you, Rika and Kotone? No other choice. I need to go to Hawaii, you know, to yes, see you. Please go. I to see you. <laughs> My God. Okay. Yes, everyone's invited. <laughs> yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Kotone. And brothers and sisters, uh, all good things must come to an end. Except more devotion. We'll see you all bright and early tomorrow at 6 a.m. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Kamsamida. Thank you. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Kamsamida.